morning I do not take it for granted it has taken the grace of God 
and his purpose for me to be here, not my own purpose. And so I give glory to the Lord. God bless you. And thank you for coming. As I always tell you, we do not send messages to anyone to come. You come because there is a, an inner urge. Maybe to put it clear, you come because of something you are looking for in the house of God. And that must and cannot be you're coming because you want to see the pastor, you want to see the person worship team sing, you want to see anybody. But you come to meet the Lord and to worship him, to talk to him, and to listen to him through whoever will be speaking from here. And this morning, I'm happy to tell you that the Lord is speaking through me. I'm just a vessel, not, nothing else. Without him, I am nobody. And so I give the Lord glory. And so, a quick announcement before we get into the word. Munajua kabisa kwamba the reopening of worship, you know, places. The plan was for the process to take phases. And if you looked at uh, the original document that came from the Interfaith Council, they had indicated that uh, we will have at least three or four phases. With one, the one, the, 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 the one which was to start brought some little confusion here and there. But now it's clear that we were in the pre-phase, you know, pre-opening phase. Which ends tomorrow. And on Tuesday, 18th, we will begin the first phase. And there are guidelines which have been given, just to add on what we have been, you know, having. And so, next Sunday, from next Sunday, we will have, uh, we'll be joined by our children. And some of our senior citizens, up to a certain level, uh, this afternoon, after service, we'll be sitting down with, uh, with the Waze and we'll give the way forward through our WhatsApp, you know, platform. Uh, let me advise that uh, even if you don't check on that platform daily, try your level best, as much as you will be able to look at what is happening. Because good things are happening there daily, if you miss, so strive to go there and look at what is happening, including some of the announcements that we have to make. And so we'll give a guideline, just in brief, because the hours, you know, the time for the worship service was extended by 30 minutes. That means this service has to start earlier, earlier uh, as a... Uh, from 8.45, just 15 minutes earlier. So plan that you come earlier, 15 minutes before 9, we'll be here so that we may start the service, so that we may take our one hour and 30 minutes and create also time for others. Because we don't want to be here at 3, we are still, you know, some of us may be exhausted. And so we want to take care of everybody such that once you come, you get your quality time with the Lord. One and a half hours, and we thank God for that. So let's continue praying for uh, our country during this time, and even the world, because this is a world, you know, this is a worldwide pandemic. Another one, we've taken at least a whole month. 
we were, you know, trying to adjust here and there. And as we have been doing our culture as a church, as a local church, we've been in constant prayer. And so from tomorrow up to Friday, we'll have a whole week of prayer and fasting. And the guidelines are given in our WhatsApp group. And we'll continue to be, you know, uh, informed. So God bless you and thank you for coming once again. May the Lord bless you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning for yet another opportunity you've given to each one of us. Tumengia nyumbani mwako. Tunatarajua kubarikiwa na wewe. Hasa wakati huu wakusikia kutoka kwako. Zungumza kwa maana tunasikiliza. Katika jina la Yesu tumeomba. Tumeitwa tumishie Mungu. Tumeitwa tumtumikie. Kuwe kwema, kuwe kubaya. Kuna wakati ambapo tutakuwa na excuse that uh, you know due to what I am experiencing as a person with my family, all of us Hakuna siku ambayo unaweza ama utatoa utatoa excuse ambayo unaeleza kwamba siwezi kufanya kazi ya Mungu siwezi kuhusika katika uimbaji siwezi kuhusika katika kufanya hivi na vile kwa wakati huu kwa sababu sina hiki sina kile because every time God gives us whatever we need to live for him and to serve him. Hata wakati huu wa pandemic kuwe nini kusiwe nini God has given his people whatever they need whatever they require to live for him and to serve him. So you and me have no excuse whatsoever. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. And you know whenever we talk about kazi ya Mungu some of us wanafikiria ni utoaji tu. Hapana, utoaji ni fraction kidogo katika kazi ya Mungu. Kazi ya Mungu involves many things including loving others, helping somebody who is down. Hiyo yote ni kazi ya Mungu all the way to standing up here to lead in worship to praise the Lord with songs Hiyo yote ni kazi ya Mungu And so this morning I am coming to you with a reminder Let me allow me to you know to to call it so a reminder because there is nothing new here and no wonder the Bible was written na tukaachiwa na tuko nayo bado iwe ikitukumbusha ikutukumbusha manake kama ingekuwa hatuna haja na kukumbushwa nikihubiri leo bas utaenda nyumbani ukae ubishie bwana mpaka Yesu atakaporudi kama utakuchukuliwa yani kama utalala kama tutalala but because we, we, we have that nature of forgetfulness, we have to be reminded. We have to hear from the Lord every now and then. As the Lord reminds us of what he requires of us as his children. And so I thank God that he has a reminder for us this morning about serving him. Praise the name of the Lord. Would you turn with me to the book of Matthew? Please turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. I have a long passage given there. I'm just going to read very first. Chapter 25, the book of Matthew, verse 14 to 30. The Bible says, Again, it will be like a man 
going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to, the, to his ability. Then he went on his journey. 16. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also, the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. 21. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will, put in I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. 24. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew you are a hard man. Harvesting where you have not sown. Gathering where you have not scattered seed. This man is stupid. <laughs> stupid. He, he is not talking like, you know, like the other two. Very stupid. Judgmental. I pray that they would, they would, would not have such people here. By the grace of God. 25. So I was afraid. Went out and hid your talent in the ground. Yeah. See, here is what belongs to you. <laughs> 26. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that I, when I return I would have received it back with interest 28 take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents for everyone listen to this for everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance Whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken from him. And throw that worthless, worthless, you are seeing, eh? You will see where come you. Worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Friends, this morning, I want to remind you that we are stewards. God has given us what to serve him with. He has provided Time, he has provided health, he has provided energy, he has provided everything you and me require in order to serve God. 
And so this morning, in the spirit of uh, that ta talent, allow me to speak to you on investing in God's work. Investing in God's or Christian service, whatever you'll call it. And so this, this, this story presents one of Jesus' most significant parables. This parable regarding work set in the context of investments. Najua tunaelewa mambo ya kuwekeza. A master delegates the management of his wealth to his servants one after another. And much as in today's markets, this happens today. So in today's, you know, context, we understand mambo ya investment ata kuliko nyakati zile. He gives five talents and a talent was huge money equivalent to you know thousands if not millions so he gives to the first servant five the second one two and the third one five two of the servants as we have read they earn a hundred percent return or returns by doing what by trading with the funds that money but the third one instead of putting the money into you know investment trade he went ahead and hid the money in the ground and earns nothing kile alipewa anarudishia mwenyewe kikiwa ni hicho hicho kinyume na hawa wawili yule alipewa tano akachuma zingine tano meaning 100% return akamletea zote akufanya kama watu wa leo hizo tano ukizieka ukiziekeza unapata tano ya mwenyewe unamletea tatu alafu unajiwekea hizo zingine mbili mahali na bado unatarajia ukimpa kila alikupa na kile umezalisha bado una expect upewe haki yako hiyo ni ulimwengu wa sasa and i'm saying this because some of the people who are not faithful even in their own companies huko ambako unafanya biashara huko ambako umewekeza some of us christians viongozi hata wachungaji ambao tumewekeza tunashiriki kwa ulagai i'm praying that god will help us to be faithful servants not only to god but to you know whoever we are working for whoever we are working with to a faithful servants jamen manake hiyo yote kwa mkristo ni kazi ya mungu kazi ya mungu sio ile unakuja kufanya hapa kanisani kile umepewa na mungu and we are coming back to that kile umepewa na mungu uwe ukifanya maishani mwako yote kile mungu amekupa wacha kile umejipatia kile mungu amekupa wewe hiyo ni kazi ya mungu daktari unapotibu wagonjwa pale hiyo ni kazi ya mungu mwalimu unapofunza hawa watoto hiyo ni kazi ya mungu bawabu unayechunga hata yule yuko hapa asikie akiwa amekaa kule kwa mlango hiyo ni kazi ya Mungu wale wanaofanya katika idara ya security ndugu zetu wako kule nje hiyo ni kazi ya Mungu is God's work for you because we tend to think that uh, kazi ya Mungu inafanywa na wachungaji hapana tutakapofika huko kutoa hesabu tutapanga laini labda wewe utakuwa nyuma yangu ama umesimama mbele yangu ukitoa hesabu yako 
Na utasema ah mimi nilikuwa mwalimu ninatumikia watu sasa kazi ya Mungu kanisani nilifanya hii no hiyo yote ni kazi ya Mungu wewe fanya And so the master returns and rewards those two maid you know who give returns but severely punishes the one who did nothing who produced nothing Now the meaning of this parable extends far beyond financial investments. God has given each person a wide range of abilities and gifts, spiritual gifts. And he expects us to employ those abilities and gifts in a service. It is not acceptable merely to put the abilities and gifts on a shelf and ignore them unaziweka tu unazikalia wewe umepewa uwezo fulani wa kufanya kule nje na hata hapa kanisani an opportunity is there for you to make use of that ability hiyo skill ambayo Mungu amekupa hiyo spiritual gift lakini wewe umekaa you choose to sit there you choose to shove your gift ni kama unangoja kama yule 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 aliyepewa talanta moja unangoja siku ya kuja kwa bwana ili umtolee umwambie ile karama ulinipa ya uongozi ile karama ulinipa ya 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 kuombea wengine wapone na mambo kama hayo ndio hii my friends like the three servants we do not have abilities and gifts of the same degree the return of our master master is Christ here expects each one of us you know to bring to the lord a return that is consummate equal according to your abilities and the gifts that god has given you that's why this morning I want to suggest in fact as I conclude that in order to invest faithfully what God has given us we need to learn five lessons from this parable Mambo matano tujifunze kutokana na parable hii mfano huu uliopewana na Yesu Number one, very quickly Success is a product of our own work. Mungu ametuweka hapa duniani kwa kusudi lake na tumepewa kazi. We have a mandate as a church and you have a mandate as an individual Christian. Kwa mfano, Ben Machuka. Emmanuel Mudusi Gregory Mudhami wewe mwenyewe wewe uko na huduma uko na kazi ya kufanya hapa duniani God expects you to accomplish it here and now now that you are living na ili uweze kufaulu itakubidi ufanye kazi hebu sema nifanye kazi This parable teaches that we are to work using our abilities and gifts to glorify God, serve the common good, good of the church and other people, and even further God's kingdom here on earth. So biblical success is working diligently using what God has given us to produce the return expected by the master. So work Success is a product of work. Success cannot be product of laziness. Na kukaa na kungoja wengine wanapo wanapofanya kazi. Unangoja wakipita unaanza ku no sio hiyo. Hiyo ni ya dunia lakini godly success the success God wants us to have in his work. Ni kwamba wewe na mimi tufanye kazi tukitumia zile abilities na gifts ametupa 
Second lesson. God always gives us everything we need to do what he has called us to do. Kila wakati mungu utupa kile tunacho itaji. Ili tuweze kufanya yale anataka yeye tuyafanya. Kama vile uyu master alipo kuwa kiondoka. Alipa kila mtumishi wake something. Talents. Zile walitaji kutumia. Ili wafanyisha biashara Waekeze. Wazalishe kwa anjili yake. Si kwa anjili yao. Na kwa hivyo, they were productive. And so you and me would need to put into use. To use that at work and produce results. Kwa anjili yake mungu. Hakuna moja hapa hawezi kufaulu. Hakuna moja hapa ana cha kumwezesha kufaulu mbele za Bwana. Hakuna moja ambaye anaweza kujidai Bwana uliwapa hawa yule ukampa tano, yule mwingine ukampa kumi, yule naye ukampa ishirini, ila nami uliniokoa tu na ukaniwacha mataani. Sina chochote, sina karama, sina uwezo wowote. Kwa hivyo wewe Mungu hebu ukachukue unanya chukua just you know get the returns from those people you you know every christian amepewa kila anachohitaji ili amtumikie bwana kwacho Labda Kiswahili kiliu Tatu We are not all created equal this is something that needs to sink deep in your heart. Because it, when it comes to serving, especially when you are serving together, unaona huyu anatumika hiyo sehemu, anatumika kwingine, and then you begin, you begin to covet. Ama kuanza kuongea vibaya kuhusu yeye. Kama wewe unaona kwamba nina sehemu moja katika uduma, katika kazi ya mungu. Rithika na hiyo na ujua ya kwamba atuja umba sawa na atuja pewa karama sawa sawa. Atuja pewa the same you know, abilities. Ukiona ni na uwezo wa kufanya mambo mawili matatu manne ni mimi. Sio sisi, wewe umepewa ile yako. Kwa hivyo rithika na hiyo yako na uifanyishe kazi. Hawa jamaa, moja akapewa hii, mwingine hii na hii kulingana na uwezo wao aliona huyu ataweza akiwa na talent tano akaona mwingine huyu ataweza na mbili akaona yule mwingine hiyo moja tu ikizidi mbili ikizidi moja hataweza and so we are not equal fanya kazi na ile yako na bwana atakapokuja the reward will be given haijalishi ulikuwa na moja ulikuwa na mbili ulikuwa na tano ulikuwa na ishirini. sababu yako yule awe na moja na wewe na ishirini ni kwa sababu wewe uliweza na hizo ishirini. na hakuna vile unaweza kujiri uringa ukamwambia ya ah, wewe ni bure moja ah, wewe hapana wewe ni hiyo hizo zako ridhika na hizo uzitumie na ufanye kazi ya Mungu na Bwana akubariki sana Ne. We work for the master not our own selfish purposes. The money was, you know, that was given to the servants was not their own. What they were to earn was not theirs either to keep. They were only stewards of their master's investment. And it was the quality of their stewardship that the master sought to measure the quality na hapo ndipo tunatofautiana kabisa kuna wale tuko committed hata na hiyo moja kuna wengine tuko committed tumepewa mbili tatu lakini we, the commitment matters the same way to us christians today we should maximize the use of our abilities and gifts not for our own selfish purposes but to honor god 
mtumikie tu na hapa ndipo unakuta wengine wetu tuna selfish interest katika kazi ya Mungu hii hapo ndipo utapata kuanzia kwetu wachungaji kuna wale wamefungua makanisa hata kabla wafungue kuna wale wanajiita na kwao kanisa kama hili ni biashara they are claiming to be serving god but they are not they are serving their own interests let me tell you today's such pastors whom i call not pastors but plasters they are not the first ones wakati wa yesu walikuepo walikuepo wakaangaisha kanisa wakati wa kanisa la kwanza na tutakuwa nao mpaka yesu atakaporudi the point is for you now from your side get to know who is a true man of god na differentiate him or her from the rest na wewe unapomtumikia interest zako ziwe kando serve the interests of your master We should feel satisfaction and joy from doing our best with what God has given us in the place where his providence puts us seeking to succeed in order to you know to honor him to faulu ili sifa na utukufu zimwendee ninafurahia ninapowatumikia nyinyi na Mungu anatukuzwa ninapofanya ile kazi Mungu amenipa Ninapotumia ile karama ambayo Mungu ameweka ndani yangu. Ninapotumia ule uwezo Mungu ametia ndani yangu. Ninapotumia kukuhudumia, kuhudumia yeyote yule. Mimi usikia furaha na umpa sifa na utukufu aliyenipa. Ndipo ya mwisho inasema number five, we will be accountable. Aliporudi master kila moja alileta hesabu. Aliporudi master kila moja alirudi ali, ali, alileta hesabu yake. Na hivyo hivyo bwana atakaporudi kutochukua twende mbinguni kila moja wetu atatoa hesabu. Wewe utatoa hesabu, mimi natoa hesabu na hakuna kutolewa. Eti niambie wini enda utoe hesabu enda wale unajua kazi zangu. Enda hapana, wini atakuwa na zake, Elizabeth atakuwa na zake. Daniel atakuwa na zake na kila mmoja manake biblia inasema kila goti lita therefore brothers and sisters let us put to work what god has given us for the night is coming the night is coming very fast wakati ambapo tutakuwa na uwezo wa kutumika a time when we will not be able to work anymore putting them to work is not is you know it's like storing our treasures in heaven where nothing destroys them hayo ni maneno ya Yesu Mathayo 6:20 so nimeongea kuhusu investing in god's work kuna lessons tumejifunza tano number one, success is a product of our own work number two, god always gives us everything we need to do what he has called us to do Number three, we are all, we are not all created equal. Number four, we work for the same master, not our own selfish purposes. And number five, we will be held accountable. And may God bless you. May God bless you. And give you the grace you need to put into work the abilities and the gifts he has given you to you in particular father we thank you this morning for speaking to us help us to actualize the message you've put across this morning be glorified in jesus name we pray Amen.
Yeah.